got a good one here. Keep getting these alarms for A07 meat cooler. Been a lot of them recently. And that's this one here. So you got the meat cooler running hot and it cannot reach set point. It actually goes up and down. I've been playing with the system some here and I want to show you guys what I did. Looks to me, I noticed that my defrost temperature was pretty high. So what I did was, um, this is on rack A. So, see, A07. So what I noticed on rack A also was that the side glass is not really where I want it to be. That's my liquid line side glass feeding my liquid header, which therefore feeds all the all the circuits, okay? And on these units, for some reason, these receivers aren't really accurate. So you kind of got to go more by the sight glass and by diagnosing. So my cooler was not going good, or cooling well. My cooler was not cooling well. And you can see right now it's actually running full steam with 100% EPR uh, value. EPR valve is open at 100%, and yet my temperature is now beginning to rise again. So what I did to try to diagnose what is going on here is I found a circuit that was running good, which the circuits I found was running good on rack A was going to be, uh, which one? A02 and A01, because a little bit ago these were down in the negatives, they were like negative 15. So this freezer here was able to spare the two coils cooling for uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it was. So I took A1 and A2 and I valved it off right here. Valve off the liquid. You valve off the liquid like this. And then also on AO2. I'm gonna do it again right now to kind of show you guys what I got going on. So we're valving off AO1 and AO2. Actually, I think we're gonna leave AO1 open because I think AO1 was in defrost. Let's look and see. Yeah, AO1's in defrost, so we're going to leave AO1 open. <clears throat> so we closed AO2, and when I did that a little bit ago with both of them, I closed AO1 and AO2 to simulate and flush more refrigerant over to AO7, which is, you know, my big walk-in. When I did that earlier, I noticed a big improvement in it. And I'll show it to you here. My improvement was pretty rapid, and that was going to be right here. This is where I was hovering at. You can see it better here if I go to, let's see, here and then. No, back over here. Let's go to this. Two hour graph. In one hour. So this is where it was hanging out at for, for a while. It was hanging out around 35. So you see it. We're going in five minute intervals here. At at 7:15, it was 35.7. Five minutes later it dropped to 33.9, which is 1.8 degrees. And then five minutes later, we dropped again, 1.4 degrees. And right around here is when I, I valved it off. I valved the other two off, maybe right here. So then I started noticing a quick drop. We dropped, uh, we continued dropping one degree there. And then we went up to 1.4 degrees of a drop there. We're looking at this one. So you see here, 
we had 32.5. Five minutes later, we had 31.5. So that's one degree, 1.0. Five minutes later, after that, we had 1.4 degrees of a drop, and then here it got real good. Dropped to 26.9, and then again, 24.4, five minutes later. And right here, you can see, that's where I opened them back up. And I opened those two back up, and it immediately started rising again. And in fact, so both of those did that. I actually got my, um, my return air temperature all the way down to, let's see, what was it? Like 30, almost past set point, 33.7, 33.8. So we were doing real good. You see, we had a real, we were kind of just really slowly going down. It wasn't a good drop at all, but here it started going down real quick and even better. And then when I opened those valves up, it started going back up. And now here we are sitting at 37.3. I wonder if it's starting to go down already since I just closed the valve. I guess we can't see that yet. So this system is low on refrigerant, of course, but that's how I know for sure that's low on refrigerant because when I close off these two, and force more refrigerant to rise in the receiver level or in the liquid line, and we can force a full column of liquid to that circuit, that's my test. That's how we, or that's how I do it. I learned from someone else though, so that's how we do it. That's the test. That's how you know if you need refrigerant or if you don't need refrigerant. Regardless of if you have a side class, you can do the same test, even if you don't have a side class. You can valve off a couple of circuits that can spare the temperature or can spare it for just a little bit. You don't want to valve off one that's that's critical or that, that you, you know, absolutely got to, you know, like I wouldn't want to valve off, uh, let's see, let's go back here. So I wouldn't have wanted to valve this one off. You know, this is on the same rack. This is AO5 and AO6. I don't want to valve those off because we need those, you know? So. So that's that. Now right now my A01 is in defrost, so we're, we're, it's a hot gas defrost. And for that reason, I still have not a full column of liquid. There you can see my level rising already. tests to do. Good tests. Here we've got AO2 running, calling to be running. So if I open AO2 up, right here where I shut her off, it should make my liquid line, I mean my, my side glass, drop again. that helps some of you guys out there who are learning figuring things out for the first time or whatever subscribe and like to the channel if this kind of stuff helps you because subscribing helps me views help me too views help me more I think but subscribe I appreciate it Stuff can be tricky sometimes, so you gotta be patient. You gotta be patient. Sometimes the effects aren't immediate. But patience will always get you what you're looking for. Do you see? And see, meanwhile, during that little bit of time that I was messing with the valving off closing the valves and opening them back up instead of continuing to go up my, my temperature kind of hovered right there actually 37.3 it actually came down slowly 36.9 it was going up non-stop so 
we were going up and then I when I started filming this video right about here I started messing with those ball valves on A1 and A2 and started going down and now we're going back up again since we're out of liquid 36.9 it was just 36.8 So I had a refrigerant leak over here. On my high pressure switch, I fixed it just by tightening it. And now I'm charging it up. And then I'll get to get to roll out after that. I had two circuits in defrost just now. That's why, that's why they look so bad. It was this one and this one were in defrost. Shouldn't have two of them on at the same time. Otherwise that kind of stuff happens. And then you'll have problems with refrigeration. Anyways, that's it for here. Hope my video helps. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. slushy is more because I stopped this thing three hours early on its defrost cycle. bigger pieces of ice melting you get they fall damn it look there we go and didn't not not big enough not big enough dang it there a little bit of slushy look there we go there we go come on slushy slushy maker slushy slushy Come on, slushy. Now, I suspect we're having this excessive ice build up on the evaporator because it's uh, low in refrigerant. Yep, that's what's up. <laughs> 